There we go. Is there any sound now? I hope there is. Uh, it seems like, as I thought, that my uh, mic resetted in the latest Windows update. So, hello! Um, last episode, I was trying to finish the female legend weapon. And unfortunately, I had issues with my tablet and Photoshop, and I thought my tablet was broken. But actually, it was just a Windows update uh, messing with the Photoshop settings. So it's all fixed. Um, Photoshop works, but we are not going to look into that today. We're actually going to start on a new concept. And you can see it here in the corner. It's a small little prop, and I thought this would be... A something we can manage probably in two sessions uh, because mm, in a couple of weeks the new art station challenge starts and i will be uh, participating in that so i thought for those two months when the challenge is running i will do uh, environment art uh, wild west theme i'm not really sure yet what kind of uh, environment i will be doing uh, since there are a lot of cool concepts going on on that site. They had the concept art competition before, which ends just before the 3D uh, section starts. So I will see if I can find something cool in there or if I will try to make my own concept. And I also haven't really decided yet if I'm going to do stylized or realism, but since I've been doing a lot of stylized now with props, I think I might actually do something realistic instead, just to have uh, some kind of change. And, um, well, today then, we are going to uh, sculpt this one, but usually, as before I go into ZBrush, I do a block out on my model, uh, just to make sure I have the proportions right, and also just so I have something to sculpt on. Um, I haven't yet really tried out ZModeler, so because of that, I just don't do this initial thing in ZBrush. So we will, uh, much like with the sword, start the blocking and uh, then we'll see where that uh, takes us. So here I have a fat little cylindrical thing. Uh, so basically I'm going to make the base. It's very uh, squashed together. So uh, we're going to make it a little bit more squashed. We're also going to make this section around here. The rope we're actually not going to make in Maya. Well, I'm going to put out a little, I guess, just a curve here uh, to get the shape. But um, I have a brush for it, so we're going to drag out some rope in ZBrush instead. Um, so it's a brush I've been using for a long time. Um, it's just faster and easier to make rope with that. So, let's see. Start with um, blocking out this then. So, what I'm doing now is that I'm too lazy to do a new primitive. Uh, and because it's going to be stylized anyway, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit of wonky shapes in here. Uh, anyway, so I usually copying objects uh, that I already have in the scene, so I don't have to go and make a new one. And yeah, it's quite easy to just press the button up here, but I like doing it this way. Um, so, if you're wondering what kind of program it is to display the picture on top of uh, other programs instead of using the Windows image viewer. Uh, it's a uh, pure ref. Um, it's nothing really fancy but you can put multiple images in there to just display it on top and I just installed it so I don't have my shortcuts for it. Uh, I feel like I'm installing new programs quite a lot uh, on this PC. Uh, because it's fairly new, I changed out all the parts, so just now and then I realize, oh wait, I need this, oh, and I need this, and then, uh, so I just sometimes uh, forget that I need to set up some other commands and uh, um, hotkeys for it. 
Uh, so let's see, we're gonna have the base, it's sticking out a little bit. Also, it's a bit too round up here. It's gonna be easier to see the shaping of it once we have some more parts uh, to work with. So, fat little barrel. Um, we are going to put some planks on it because we want to sculpt on individual planes. Uh, I'm going to put some the wireframe on and then get rid of the grid because it's in the way. So here we have the middle plank. Um, the reason why it's a separate object now is just so I can easily dynamesh it or um, just move it around in ZBrush later. Uh, this uh, goes a little bit down. over to the other side. So we have the planks in there. Um, the middle guy is going to be a little bit bigger later on as well. We'll fix that. The edge on this one is a bit higher up. Uh, so this concept I just found on Pinterest, so it's nothing I made myself. I just uh, thought it was very cute. And um, yeah, a typical stylized object. So that one for some reason is a little bit thinner. And... So initial shapes and then what for what do we want? Um, let's uh, do the top part. So still just blocking out. So we have the metal ring down here that's going almost to all the way out in the plank. And then we have the plug cork thing and has a cute little spiral going on in there as well. Then we have the metal uh, pieces attaching it uh, to the metal ring. Over here. And on the other side as well. So we're just gonna have a base for everything and I'm unsure if I'm actually gonna do something about the skull because we can easily make that with just moving around a bit of clay and uh, sea brush instead. And 
because I have a new uh, new parts in the computer, uh, we're going to see if we can use the Dynamesh function, which I couldn't really <laughs> on my other setup because it was uh, so damn old, I couldn't really run it at all. So hopefully that will work, uh, which means that every part we're making here now, we're just gonna Dynamesh. Uh, so we have a nice proper base and then go nuts on it. And then we have the small little bolts. Probably enough with just one for now. Um, we don't have anything on the bottom ring. Okay, so the shaping of it. Um, it still needs to be a bit more round, the shape here. So we'll just uh, make it a little bit more fat. Uh, what I like to do now is to uh, decide how many planks we're going to have. So I'm thinking looks like it might be able to use split it in half here and then it would be three plus three, so that's six. Um, which uh, would be quite big planks, but we'll try it out. Uh, that's why we also do a block out try stuff out. Um, so let's take this uh, guy, cut it in half, and then uh, how many sides did we do? Uh, six, right? So it's uneven to begin with. Oh well. So do like this. We just want to see if um, we can have a big chunky plank parts. So that would be one-fourth. Uh, so that would indeed be very thick planks. I wonder if we're gonna make it Gonna make them smaller, perhaps. Gonna make it uneven, maybe, and have seven. That might, uh, that might work. So then we have, maybe it's a good idea to put these out because the ropes are hanging on them, so... Six of them. And then I'm going to have a rope from here to there. And... So it's basically a small cylindrical knot around it. So why am I doing a huge fat cylinder going around? Well, we need it for the, um, the rope brush I have. Uh, so we're basically going to use primitives uh, because we're going to drag a line around and then we're going to pop out some uh, ropes. So we need a flat surface to work on. Uh, kind of in the size we would like it to be as well. And then we can adjust this 
like in ZBrush, but we need to uh, uh, have something to work with. So we're probably gonna just do these two uh, a bit like unique, this one unique and that one, and then just copy it over to the other side uh, because we don't need really need to have all of them uh, unique. Right, um, then we have the little rope down here and for that what I do, like with more complex objects, but we can do it for funds um, with this small one. Uh, I usually uh, use the curve um, curve tool uh, to make ropes and what I do then is that I use, use small cubes so I can uh, put the small little dots uh, on the cubes so it actually um, snap to the point surfaces and then follow, follow the curve I already made but uh, with small cubes so then I can decide a bit beforehand instead of like moving the verts uh, a lot. So I just find it. Um, I, I usually do this when I have a surface that's very complex that I need to uh, trace um, with a lot of cables and stuff hanging from it. So it does go from here. Um, So now we have a base to work with uh, because the rope is going to start over there. Uh, but what we basically want to is just to have a tracing round for the other rope, which we can probably do on the barrel. But I just want to show how I would uh, do uh, otherwise. Let's see, uh, create curve tool, CV curve tool. So then I would uh, snap it to. Uh, the cubes, the corner of them, they already have. Like this. Then I can go and, well, of course, adjust it as much as I want afterwards by clicking the points and stuff. But it's easy to um, just do small cubes. Uh, for more complex stuff, then you can just make small cubes uh, along a very long surface and then. Uh, use the CV curve. Um, so what? why do I do a curve? Um, it's also to have an object ex uh, extrude along uh, the curve. Uh, so it's quite handy. We don't need 20 sides for this one. I like to have six sides. So what I basically do then is that I uh, take whatever I like to be um, the cable or the rope put it in the corner where I started um, up here. This one is going to be fatter. And we go into faces. Deselect the, the things we're not going to extrude. And we select the curve. And then you can choose extrude face. You see how it um, extrude immediately to the other side, but that's because we only have one division, so it can't really bend. But if we start adding divisions, then it's um, going to add as many as we like to have along the curve. Um, this is just a block out, it doesn't really matter how many we have. Uh, the curve is still going to stay underneath, so you can reuse it as many times as you want. Uh, this one now looks a little bit funky up here, but that's because we extruded from this point, so we can just go in and remove that. Uh, it will always cap unless you tell it not to, uh, but we are extruding from that flat surface, so... There we go. Um, then we can... 
move this one in a little bit. I don't need the curve and I definitely don't need the um, cubes to remove them as well. Uh, move this one a little bit in case we're going to use this one as a starting point for the rope in ZBrush. So it doesn't matter that doesn't have the thickness really because we're just gonna paint alongside it or paint on the surface. But we have the idea. I think it will be long enough here. Looks like it. And we have the cork, which I see now is a little bit too high. Let's uh, lower it a bit. There we go. So, let's see. We have everything we need. Uh, we're going to sculpt on it in ZBrush. We can change it as much as we like afterwards with um, Dynamesh. I think I'm going to do individual planks. It's easier to sculpt on the sides here to make the nice little cracking and stuff instead of having this massive cylindrical thing. Um, so if we say that we go with six sides, then how wide do we want them? One, two, three. So if we make it 24, I think that should be um, an okay size. Obviously, we're going to have to go in and do the loops again. So, we are going to have... Um, using four of them I think unless it gets too thick Planks individual. They are very big though. But if you're gonna have six planks only, then that's uh, how it's gonna be. Um, all right, and then we have the skull, which I think we will just use uh, swear and then move tool and drag out the shape because it's annoying to do that shaping in. Uh, Maya, oh, it's uh, probably very easy, but yeah, that's it. Um, then we are done with the blockout, I would say. So we are going to take this object. We will um, group it gonna make one that is combined and 
then we will uh, make an export so we can put it into ZBrush um, scroll barrel block as in block it Right, then we move into ZBrush, uh, which I already had opened with a cylindrical shape because we're gonna replace it with the um, block out we made. There we go. Now it's in ZBrush. Uh, but it's one combined object, so I will just do a quick uh, split to parts. And then it will split every object it will find, um, which seemed to be correct. Uh, it didn't do any weird splitting, so that's good. Um, it's very unsorted though, so we have some planks here, and then we have the rest of the planks on the bottom. But um, I don't usually look at that anyway. Okay, so what should we start with? Uh, we should start with doing a save. Because I have a tendency to crash ZBrush. Alright, um, so basically now we will choose an area where we like to uh, start sculpting at and for me I would say we could start making the ring perhaps the top ring maybe uh, what I sometimes do is I sub the uh, model in Maya which means that it looks a little bit more smooth uh, in ZBrush once you put it in, but you can start with uh, having it very low as well. But if we do divide it, then it will be smoothing itself, so we can avoid that um, by unclicking smooth. Still gonna have it a little bit more smooth, I guess. Um, there we go, that's more like it. But if I continue doing this, uh, then we'll have very harsh ed edges, which is why I tend to do uh, a sub D model before that. Um, or I used to append a sub tool uh, instead. I will see if I can, what I would like to do. Um, I don't have Go C installed on my computer, so I would make the jump in between the program way easier. Actually, I haven't really tried the light boolean feature. We could do that. object in my ZBrush already. So 
so I'm unsure how to do this, but... Let's see. Uh, light boolean, and then... There we go. So the cylinder, uh, extra cylinder we made now is actually the one we're moving up and down to insert um, insert with. So if I move it up way, way up higher, we are not going to see any changes. But if we lower it down, we are. So I can change it in shape as well so it goes further down, which means that we will have a hole in the and the mesh. And depending on the size of both of them, uh, we can experiment with uh, getting the top ring. So what I could have done is doing the block out in here as well with uh, the boolean. So there's like tons of different features, but I'm not really that comfortable with uh, this, I only seen a video about the feature, so I didn't really know how to make it work, but it seems like it's working. No idea how we are going to append this, but I guess there's a button somewhere. Um, and then we're going to make this one smaller. There, I guess. Okay, so, um, now we can, we can play around with this, I guess, forever, until we actually commit to it, and let's see, where is uh, that supposed to be? Um, I do really think it's a cool feature that I would like to integrate in my workflow. Fortunately, I didn't have that much time to look into it, so... Is this in... No, that's not it. Or is it in render properties or something? Hmm. That's the button I have up there. Um... Do I just merge them together? Mm, I don't think that's the way. Um. Hello, Yusef. You got out from the gym? I have no idea when you wrote this message. I'm sorry, I was busy looking at uh, ZBrush uh, to see what I'm supposed to do. Um, good job working out in the gym. I went myself during lunch today as well, so... Um, CC brush, light boolean. I'm just gonna look up quickly where the um, uh, where the button is for that. Geometry, dynamic subdivision, okay, we will see what happens then, um, there's a small little apply button there. I don't know. No, it, nothing happened. Okay. Mm. 
downside with looking at a video is that you don't really know when they're going to press the button you need. There's tons of features in the um, live boolean that look super awesome, really. Oh well, I can't find anything about it, but uh, we don't really need to use the feature. But it's, um, it's a cool feature. Um, Especially since you can do a lot of um, Boolean executions that you wouldn't really do like in Maya or, well, you could in Maya, but the wireframe will get messed up. Um, so, I'm just gonna close those, get rid of the live Boolean, and we will uh, do it like I usually do instead. Alright, uh, let's lower the um, smoothing. Solo this out. A little bit high less resolution, perhaps. Uh, we're gonna use Trim Dynamic to get rid of all the artifacts and stuff. Uh, so we will basically use the fill around with um, the brushes we have. Super strong. Um, hello, hello. I'm a winner, chicken dinner. So find it a very funny name. Um, see, music would be nice. Some, some clicking. Yeah. Um, any suggestions of music, perhaps? Um, so I don't torture everyone with uh, electro swing every session. <laughs> cylinder and this is way faster than sitting in uh, dueling with that or if I knew how the live boolean button would have worked I guess smooth and nice Board. Import. 
Look at that. Yeah, basically, uh, ZBrush for me has always just been a tool to make small scratches and dents and whatnot uh, instead of modeling. So now when we sub D, it's getting smooth and nice, and you can still uh, use Dynamesh for it. Pretty. Uh. Oh, okay. Wall of text. When you create a boolean mesh by pressing the button make boolean mesh under the subtool tab, it will create a new tool which will have this name starting with U mesh. And also make sure you close eye of the object you don't want to be sent in a new emerge mesh thumbnail when you do the boolean operation. Alright. So it gets Okay, so it creates a new tool, just like uh, adaptive skin meshes and then place itself here. Hmm. That is handy, I guess. Also a bit annoying, if you don't know, but yeah. Uh. Subtool tab. Oh. Alright, that was too obvious, I missed it completely. So, the button I was looking for was in the subtool tab the whole time. It's here, it's greyed out. Uh, make boolean mesh. Okay. <laughs> um, well then, that's great to know. I also haven't tried... Um, I haven't tried live boolean, I haven't tried C modeler. And that's two uh, things I would like to expand into my workflow instead of like kind of do the whole object in my end and just uh, do some dents and scratches and alpha jitter in uh, ZBrush. That's basically how I made all the models in uh, Horizon as well, all the organic things. Made them almost completely in my end and just um, sculpted on the object in ZBrush. So, um, it would be nice to change that, uh, but it takes a while, especially if I have then I have to sit and do some of my own tinkering uh, with a tutorial or something, so I know where all, all the buttons are in the uh, ZBrush. But thank you, uh, I'm a winner chicken dinner, and uh, now I know where the button is, um, easier, and maybe I should just try it out immediately and see what will happen. So, is it even visible? Okay, here it is, and that's that one. Transparent, there we go. So I have that circle here, this one here, did it stop working now? Wait, did I forget to press something? Light boolean. Oh wait, I pressed dynamic several times on it. It's gonna have that. Did I do something funny? Let's see. Let's delete this one. There we have that one. And... Always so fun trying out new stuff when you don't really know what you're doing. 
start. Okay. Oh, okay, so I grouped it. All right, that's what I've done with this one. Mm -hmm. Did I? Okay, so it's still there. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I need a group. There we go. There it is. Intersecting with that one. And there's the ring that we need. Alright, and then if I understand correctly, we can do make live boolean mesh like this. Or is it this one I should press? Right. Oh wait, I got that object and the cylinder. Okay, I see. And if we go back then here and then we can put the new ring in by doing like this. And then we have that ring. Okay, well it's uh, not too hard. Okay, I see. That's quite cool. We have an extra ring, uh, which we will put aside for now, because we can uh, probably use it for here instead of uh, going uh, back into Maya. And I will still use this ring, because it had uh, nice uh, tilted uh, edges. Um, it's already kind of done. So. Uh, music, was it? What did you see? Uh, there were no suggestion. So I will then torture you with um, <laughs> electro swing. Well, there is a live channel on YouTube here. Best sh of chill out music. Try this. Seems to be jazz and chill pop, it says. So, oh, we can work with this. Um, I think they changed the sound or music now. All right. Let's continue on then. So, uh, let's look at the edges. They're quite sharp, but we still want to have that little bit of stylized look, I think. So, um, we will go in and uh, subdivide it a little bit. Then we have some nice, quite
quite chunky scratches in here. I also thought it would be nice to, uh, since I don't use Substance Painter, so when we are doing the textures, we will do it in Painter. Uh, it means that I will probably be very slow, because I'm going to be new to the program, but I thought it would be fun to just look into using that instead of um, tinker with uh, Photoshop uh, to learn something new. Just like now when looking into live boolean and stuff, um, just adding stuff to my workflow is always nice. And then um, I will try to use it more and more. And I think for the next small little prop, I will try to only use ZBrush and don't go into Maya, so, like even for the blockout. Uh, so that means they're probably going to have to use CModeler, which is nice because that uh, would also add into the workflow. So I'm not going to use Maya for the next prop at all, on, unless it's for um, the retopple later, because uh, that is horrendous to do in uh, ZBrush. Okay, and then we work a little bit on the bottom part here as well. It's such a relief to uh, know that my tablet wasn't uh, the faulty one. Uh, so I didn't have to go and replace the tablet all of a sudden, and instead it was just a Windows uh, update uh, that was messing with Photoshop last time. Though I did actually manage to break the tablet at work, it just doesn't connect to the computer anymore. Um, <laughs> for some reason it all of a sudden stopped uh, working. It doesn't work on any other computer there either, so I think it uh, broke somehow. So it can happen, that's why I was afraid that this one also broke, because uh, it, the one at work broke before this one. Okay. So we're changing the concept a little bit, because I like having those stylized, trimmed edges. Um, Let's grab a layer and store morph. And yeah, we'll uh, go in here and make some. Uh, cracks, I guess, in the model. It's a very chilled um, 
playlist I'm doing. Let me know if you don't like it and like me to change to something that is a little bit um, or upbeat, I guess. But then you're gonna have to give su suggestions. Did I put pinch? Let's see, did not put it here, so. Okay, that's uh, quite decent, I would say. Um, if I have it on layer, I can always turn it on and off uh, for later purposes, in case I change my mind about the style uh, of how I made uh, certain details. I'm forgetting the chat. Um, do you play game music from YouTube that don't get muted? Uh, you don't hear the music? Hmm. Okay, so... Maybe, maybe you don't hear my desktop audio then. Let me check. It's settings in the um, OBS studio. So, do you hear it now? But really, doesn't video game music get Muted. Oh, it doesn't. Hmm. Well. I really, really like Zelda, <laughs> as some of you know. Uh, the orchestra music is very, very nice. Uh, the live one they had for the 25th anniversary. But that's a bit weird that um, video game music doesn't get muted. It's copyrighted as well.
the symphony. So, just because you said that, we're gonna listen to Zelda music. Because it's always nice. So it depends on the music. Oh, well, it's good to know. We'll see if uh, Zelda get muted. Anyone played Breath of the Wild? I have, I think, done three of the beasts. I still have one left, which is the um, Goron City uh, top. I haven't even been up there yet because I went there in the beginning <laughs> when I started the game, and everything is burned up in my uh, all my weapons because they were wood, I assume. Uh, so, well. I used to left it for the last and then I haven't had time to play at all. And I'm gonna see if I can do that now when I have uh, some time off in between the jobs. Uh, see if I can finish the game because it's been <laughs> a year since I actually got the game and I still haven't really made that much progress. But I really like the game. Uh, even if it's not uh, like other Zelda universes uh, have been. object is quite small. But also, Dynamesh is working um, really well. Didn't really want to operate my previous computer at all, so I'm happy. really well. That's nice.
Now, though, I removed my layers, which was a bit stupid. I guess I could always go back, but my loss is very high. Uh, but that's nice knowing. Can dynamo shoot? Working a bit in the, the low res uh, right now because it's. Uh, I'm just very used to uh, having to do that since the computer is very slow, but I guess we can just uh, skip that now. We know it's uh, actually uh, working properly. But then again, sometimes it's not really that noticeable that it's a uh, low res anyway in the bakes. So. I haven't played it yet, the Zelda game. Um, well, I do recommend you playing it. It's a, it's a great uh, game, uh, well, it's game of the year, so I guess everyone was well aware of that. But some uh, Zelda fans are a bit skeptical to it because it's so different. But uh, I would say they changed it for a better. I don't think it would have lasted that much longer if they continue in the same uh, Zelda, uh, like with just uh, doing a temple and then getting a weapon and then never really using it again uh, thing, because that's not really uh, how newer games works. So it felt a little bit outdated. Uh, so I think it's great they made a new experience of it. some more um, wear and tear and edge cracks and whatnot on this one later because uh, there's lots more probably on the other side that we can't see but let's leave that for now and continue with what should we continue Paper works as intentional. Like, no. What? Nope. Huh. I wonder. Thank you. 
it's uh, not centered, that's why.
So we have the roundness going here, and here it should go out a little bit and then bend in. So. Just do it like this. The pivot was uh, not in center. So that's some really, really long teeth now. So, it's more or less the same as I did in Maya, but in ZBrush instead, just blocking out the shape. Um, so, it's just a block out and then we'll start shaping it a bit more into the um, barrel itself. So, let's... Uh, 
merge it down, make a copy so we can always go back. That was a terrible job, Dynamish. So it feels like it should slant a little bit um, to get that uh, beveled feeling. It's not completely uh, symmetrical, so... But that's also intentional. bit more is shaping it, uh, make it look a little bit like handcrafted metal I guess, but having it a little bit wobbly and uneven. I think this is the best part with uh, stylization in general because you can be uh, very uneven and uh, work with the shapes. some kind of skull that is not really following the shape yet. Uh, we'll save the bending for a bit later because we're gonna have to make the planks as well. Um, so we don't really know yet how that shape is gonna be. Um. Oh! 
the Wild West challenge. Jesus, I'm so bad at reading the the chat. So, yeah, the Wild West challenge. It's an uh, art station challenge. So, um, art station host um, challenges like competitions against each other um, in different categories. So you have the concept art category and you have the 3D category. You can actually just show you here. Wild West challenge. First thing to <laughs> click on when you go into art station. And um, basically you have an like amount of time and then you participate in this um, category and phase one is the one that is right now. It's the concept art, character and environment and prop design, uh, which is like concept art, uh, renders, I guess, matte painting and stuff. Uh, and then they will have the... So that's the concept art, yeah. Um, so you can see here, the, the list all the challenge, like you can enter in them. So here, 3rd of April to the last of April. Uh, Keyframe concept, character design, all of these are more like painterly things. And then here you go, the character art, real time, rendered, level art, and then prop art rendered. So it's also for like VFX and C CGI uh, artist. And uh, you can choose a concept art from this uh, category and then participate with making it in uh, 3D, if you like. And when you participate in the 3D ca category, you have two months. And uh, basically, if I find something, I guess, in here, uh, because there's some really talented people, I will uh, try to make that environment. Uh, otherwise, I will try to make my own. And Wild West can be so much more than uh, just cowboys and um, I guess like Wild West movies and stuff. I saw someone who made a tent, like, you know, Native American village before. Uh, so that could be cool. Maybe doing something on a mountain uh, with a lot of different uh, tents on them in a sp special design then. So basically you uh, can either do a character or an environment and uh, I will be doing a whole environment uh, with that theme. And the reason why I just participate in the challenge is also like a motivational thing I guess, not for winning or stuff because I don't think I have that much of a chance in it. but. Um, it's fun to uh, try it out and uh, also I have some people in the Discord, uh, some students of mine that was also gonna participate and then some friends in the character concept uh, category. So we're gonna be a bunch of people uh, making uh, the challenge, it's gonna be fun. Uh, so that's why I'm doing your small props now on the stream because I'm gonna do a major bigger thing later on. Uh, Oh, hi Lingon! Yeah, Lingon is one of the guys who's gonna do the character art challenge in 3D. Uh, welcome home. Good evening outside the lane. And... Nice to meet you, as I say. Yeah, okay. nice to meet you. And... So, yeah, the... We'll see what I do uh, for the Wild West, but I'm quite certain I'm gonna do some realistic stuff instead. Uh, for the stylized things. And that's why I was thinking about the engine I would use because you're gonna have to make a proper environment as it would be in a game. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, I haven't done that for a while, like a whole of my own. So um, that's why I'm gonna stream. And so it might be that I stream more than just Wednesdays. Uh, or I used to work on it on the side as well, and then uh, you stream the more interesting bits. Because I am quite sure, uh, certain it's not going to be fun to watch me do uh, UVs and uh, retopoing stuff 
because that's uh, one of the more boring things with game art. Um, so we have the skull there. Okay, so we have uh, we have the this section here. Uh, ideally, maybe we should start with the planks, but um, let's do some uh, try out the rope brush for fun. So. See, we go in and grab it from my brushes here. Rope. So it's actually looking at points. So if I just do it like this, it's gonna swirl around them. This is how it looks, and also it grabs the size of the the, the brush. Uh, so you have to mask it out to get rid of it. Uh, you can also move it around. Oh wow, something happened there. Uh, to change the position of it. And if we like it, we can do it like that. Uh, keep it, or we can... Uh, Group it. So now it's the same group. So we're gonna go in and group the last one. So now we can actually delete it because we don't want that. Uh, or, oh, here we go, we can get it back to it. But it's a rope brush um, that I usually d use when I'm doing the ropes because it's faster than trying to do like a um, twisted cylinder and so on. And here you see you also have like connection points and ends um, that you can use because it's an IMM brush. Not sure what I got it actually. Um, if it was a friend or if it's actually downloaded from a site or if I bought it but been using it for such a long time, I can't really remember where I got it from. Uh, but yes, I think if we do like this and then yeah, it get up updated the size of it depending on the brush. So we can uh, move it around trying to place it again or we can drag out one new. Uh, you can see how it actually starts to twist as well if we are not careful. It's also a little bit too long. with it as well by drawing it into each other. <laughs> Yay! It uh, goes in itself, bit loose end and then back. Okay, so let's make the big knot here then, and I'm gonna unmask that one. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, and we so the rope we're making gonna look a little bit different, obviously, from this one since I'm gonna use a pre-made brush.
So that's basically a rope brush. And uh, what I did now was also to make it a bit softer by smoothing it out and uh, inflating it and stuff. I said it uh, was going to do a recovery file. Let's see if it did first before I um, remove my hair from my head. Stores is in local temp, and Zebra stores it in. Or well, maybe it gave me a. Quick save file in the startup menu. trying to breathe. Um, when was the last save? Oh, nice. Recover on the recover tool. Quick save. 2020. Yes, it was only... Yeah, it was only the brush uh, rope thingy, right? There we lost. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Yeah, well then. Not much to do, then you just redo it. It was very quick anyway. because of the rope brush.
hard to tell. It might be a, a bug or just ZBrush crashing because it's ZBrush. Uh, sometimes it just does that as well. So. Oh, you wrote about the challenge as well. Join the real-time 3D character challenge for coolness points. <laughs> Hang on the curves and see brush. Oh yeah, you mean the um, the tool there I use for the brush. Uh, it is the um, Symphony of the Goddess uh, anniversary symphony from uh, Zelda. So it's not the Breath of the Wild one, I think, or maybe. They added some in the playlist, but it's the, I think it's just a symphony of the godness. Uh, it's just mixed the songs. Uh, I had a seabrush crash on me four times a day at work and 3ds max at once. I didn't even do anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> oh, I feel so sorry for you. I had a Maya crash today. I clicked on the cube I just created and it crashed. I don't know why it crashed, but uh, yeah, I guess you had something similar then. I really hate it when it crashes, but then again, I never really know why. Um, unless I do some stupid shit in Maya with the boolean, then I know it's going to crash, because it always does. I recommend trying out the new modes. Should be exactly the right thing for this task. The new modes. Um, which one do you mean? Or not really sure what you mean with modes. The elastic curve mode. Yeah, it's uh, still f uh, R8 for me. I don't have the 2018. I do have it installed, as you probably saw when I started the R8. But I have nothing set up in that one, and like no brushes or like my interface and stuff. That's why I'm not using it because I've been too lazy to s uh, to sit and do that. Um, but. Um, might be a good idea to do for the next one. But there's so many features as well that I really, really want to um, try out in before the 2018 version, uh, like C Modeler and uh, Booleans and stuff. And I just haven't had the time. It's just being silly. I did not ask it to spin around. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Whee! I'm just gonna do a smaller brush and then I'm gonna increase the size of it instead.
I... can't have that so <sighs> now it's struggling with the the rope brush instead it was such a nice uh, rope we had going on there before Actually, I never really got a hang about the curve either. I'm not really sure how I usually manage when I'm struggling so much now. Stupid. as look like that. <laughs> I don't care anymore. We are using the, the mask. No, uh, polygroup. Group mask. just gonna be that not super pretty there's a hole in it but it doesn't matter because we're gonna connect some piece of rope there anyway so otherwise I would have redone it again I 
piece of uh, rope that is not that nice. So why am I using transpose again? Oh, I got sick of uh, all the new tools. <laughs> it looks like a pastry. Wooden plank. Oh yeah, then set this place. And it's beveled in between the planks. And then it has some swervely things. It's not that much details, it's quite large details and most of it is brown. We don't have to keep that as we need to do that with a knot really. But we will see, maybe we'll go and just do this really big bunny not instead if I'm gonna use these details. So we're gonna move all the planks later on as well to adjust it to fit this um, so lines in the same way.
just uh, <laughs> thought that if I am going to add those details, I should probably move it already. Uh, otherwise, it will get wrong. They want a line otherwise. Um, so that one there. So this one is going just. Okay, so we have a basic sketch for how we sh uh, want it to be, the pattern. Face and brushes with action and problem, we should do it soon. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem, it's just I'm lazy. <laughs> um, you can still use 4 8 then, of course. You had, you had it right before. Um, you mean the bun? <laughs> or. Ah, oh, the knot. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm going to change it later, but it's fine to have it there right now. Frame mesh would have helped there. Frame mesh, is that an, another feature in uh, 2018 or is it just something I haven't looked into? Like, my ZBrush knowledge is basically drag lines with um, basic brushes or use custom alphas on already like model things I done in my app. That's it. Um, and then I just stuck with that um, method for a long while. I didn't even use Dynamesh for a very long time. Uh, it's still very new for me. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of things to learn in, uh, in ZBrush. I feel very outdated sometimes. So far, like uh, at work, it's just faster for me to uh, do it uh, with my ZBrush uh, by just using ZBrush for detail. I guess that's just 
is me being used with it, so more practicing, then I will get used to that workflow. to use to some diamond shapes as an insert tool or something and then uh, use live boolean for stuff like this for next time way faster
bist du einer, weißt So, we're probably just gonna make three planks and then copy them over and turn them upside down to save some time. Listening to Zelda for a long while. Shall we change it to another uh, playlist? Oh, okay. Uh, explanation from for frame mesh. Uh, if you polygroup the front face of the circle on which the knot stays on, then Control Shift on the grouped face of the circle to hide others, then Top menu stroke curve function frame mesh will auto create a curve around the edge of the circle face. Then you just click on curve and it'll create a knot. <laughs> My English. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a really nice uh, feature. Oh, okay. That could be cool to try out to get an auto uh, curve. I have to fiddle around with that myself then. That sounds great. I'm learning a lot by having you here. I'm a winner chicken dinner. Um, as soon as I'm done with the board, I should try it. Then we have the change of sound or like music. Let's see. Um, let's just name drop a game you guys like. Um, otherwise, I will go with Last of Us, I think, because that has a nice tune to it. I have a black belt on sea rush. <laughs> I am prepared to give you a black belt in sea rush, seeing as much functions you know. Uh, I, f I feel like I have a white with one stripe <laughs> or something, at least when it comes to the massive stuff. Uh, Function like it's just scroll uh, scroll in the menus here, and you will find multiple tools and settings on everything, and then you have the 2D mode, and that's just uh, yeah, you just use a few of the functions. Euro Europa Universalis. Really? Just because you worked on that game? No. 
not gonna listen to that. Here, YouTube. Yerni. All right, let's go with this then. Yerni is a really, really lovely game. I really like the art style in this one. I also find it very scary, uh, like towards the ending to play. It's the, the mood and atmosphere made it a bit uh, scary. But the music is actually really great. Somehow I've, I doubt it. I don't like that game or like that type of games. Yearn is nice. Not to hate on the games you make, it's uh, just not my type of games. Notice that I'm sitting like this, bent over right now when I'm working. <sighs> Not good. And I'm always complaining about other people's posture. Okay, so this swirly thing then.
So, how would you guys have done this? Like, the way I do it? With orb crack or some other brush? Or would you have, like, perhaps made an alpha and dragged it out instead? I'm just curious because there's multiple ways of doing it. Digital Bacon. Oh wow, what a name! <laughs> that's uh, that's really funny. Um, I feel like Orb Crack and Trim Dynamic works really well. It just takes more time, but I think it gets better results. Okay, so you would have uh, done kind of the same then. Yeah, it takes a bit more time uh, to do this than uh, doing like alpha stamps. Because otherwise, I guess you just go into Photoshop, do all of these like beveled edges, like drag it out on a flat plane, C brush, grab dock, and then you have your alpha and you just drag it out and then it's done, kind of. Uh, but then you have to spend time outside of C brush to do that, of course. That's at least how I would have done the alpha approach if I would have come with that instead. it from it's really cool um, I found it on Pinterest and the artist name I actually found it as well Anna Lepenchkina Lepen I'm probably butchering that name Lepeshkina yeah and she was um, like I well you can uh, right click the image and then Google uh, Google search for similar images so I found uh, found the artist because usually the name is not in the the pictures when you find it that way. And she made it uh, during a, um, a YouTube tutorial because apparently she's a uh, 
concept art is doing uh, YouTube tutorials for um, drawings uh, and yeah, just like these small doodles or characters and environments and stuff. So I didn't find it on her art station though, so I guess it's just purely made for that uh, tutorial. So that's how I found it. But yeah, I thought it was really cute as well. Uh, so that's why I want to make it. Or well, you said cool, but I... It's cute cool, I guess. and save the pictures and I have a plugin for Chrome where I can save uh, pictures from any site onto Pinterest boards so it's nice to have uh, everything in one collection and the good thing is that you can share boards as well so if I find a lot of pictures and then just make say a high poly board because uh, I save a lot of high poly images or something share that with others as well without having to share all my uh, you know, folder from a computer or something. So that is uh, very neat. board that everyone has access to. Then I could choose from there. Also, I'm very nitpicky in choosing concepts, so it took ages for me to just find one. Like, I found dozens of them, like, oh, I want to make this, and then I want to make this, and then this. But just, like, choosing one was very hard, because it's like, but I, I want to make this one as well, or should I make this one first, or like, ugh.
to get lost in boards. Yeah, that, that can happen as well. Um, you find one board and then another one because you can watch other people's boards. Yeah, that happens. Or you start following someone else's board and then another one and all of a sudden you have like 50 boards. <laughs> I really like using pure ref. Uh, I go through that when I want to make something. Then I put three images in front of me and have to choose one. Mm. Yeah, that's basically what happened. Though I asked some friends, like I had seven of them, and then just posted it uh, or spammed them on uh, on chat, being like, "Which one should I make? Uh, help me making up my mind." Uh, Though I already kind of had decided myself, but I needed a second opinion. But this is pure ref. Uh, it's nice to uh, have the concept on top of uh, the screen. say one plank done and with that we're also gonna save but with the next plank and here we have kind of a crack going on that is faintly going into each other and then we have the curve here so if we take into account that the rope is gonna be fatter then the curve will start
bunch of space in between them. That's good. So we just sketch out first.
think that's better. guess I could have done it that way as well. Uh, didn't really think about it because uh, that's this is usually the setup I have when I'm working anyway so and not having you OBS on top of that so I guess that makes sense I could have uh, put it on top of there. Uh, do you ever use clip curve for this kind of stuff? Uh, yes I do. This one. I uh, did with the sword last time when I was streaming. Made a small uh, stylized sword. Like this. But we don't really need that hole in the mesh right now so uh, but yes I uh, tend to do that as well if I really want to have that uh, silhouette change then I go in and use that one but I got a recommendation I think it was from I'm going to chicken dinner right uh, to use the slice was a trim trim curve What's the slice one? I tried it out a bit uh, last time because that one actually cuts the geometry, the clip curve pushes the geometry into the mesh so you get um, polys that well, are not really working, like you just push them all in there. You can dynamesh it, but sometimes you get like small little holes from the dynamesh if it's a lot of geometry pushed in, or you can get like um, a flat plane sticking out because it's like so pushed in a lot of it that it just flattens out like geometry. So, um, those are the tools to use. Um, yeah, I uh, used to clip uh, clip curve before a lot, and uh, you can see here, this is what I mean with the plane, because it's actually just pushing all the um, geometry, uh, it's actually not getting rid of it. And that is quite annoying.
exactly a trim lasso as I'm a chicken when I didn't wrote. Um, yeah, let's So for next time I'm going to use that silhouette, if I'm going to do a silhouette change, I will uh, use uh, the train curve instead of pushing the geometry. Too many tabs open. <laughs> okay. Uh, with what? Just tabs. I have also multiple tabs. I can't really sometimes see um, the icons uh, because I have so many tabs. I know people complain about it a lot when they use my computer, uh, but I don't want to close them down. Aslan, I'm working on scripts for the Skyrim mod. Uh, you mean the Lordbound project then, I guess. What kind of scripts? Is it the uh, spell potion thing uh, that you mentioned before? artwork uh, multiple times on all of those uh, different forums and uh, sites. I know that now Cubebrush as well have uh, like a forum thread and as far as I know ArtStation 
came out with a service, uh, service like a survey about starting a service of having a forum the day as well. So now it's going to be maybe yet another forum uh, to keep track of. Aslan is working on weapon scripts, mostly fighting the code and fighting their workarounds. <laughs> Good, good luck. It's probably quite annoying to work with Skyrim uh, tools. They're quite old by now as well. talking about tech and tools, I guess. Uh, but yeah, a lot of artwork are similar, I guess. Uh, I saw an artist did a train, inside of a train, and got very popular at art station. Then all of a sudden everyone made inside of a train uh, that popped up everywhere. So, uh, as soon as someone makes something that is a bit different than, uh, like, interior design, what uh, he did, then everyone else does the same. But I'm not really the one to talk, because I'm using someone else's concept now. But then, as I said, I'm also not really the one to talk as I'm sitting here doing stylization looking kind of the same as everything else, I guess. But that's also, also fun as an um, uh, exercise, I think.
it's, it's bad, especially when it's paint. No, I guess it's. Um, well, if you're working in a games company, then you're gonna have to work on that style. And if you're working a lot on it, then you kind of tend to get that style when you're doing personal work as well. I should actually save, even though I feel like I should continue working because I need to go to bed to get up to work. Um, there we go. So I will continue on this next week on um, Wednesday and I will make sure that we have the eye poly done then so we can get some substance painter in as well. Um, but wait, we can't substance paint unless we actually do the low poly and UV and bakes. Oh well, we have three times before I do the art station challenge, so finish up the the barrel next time, sculpting, and then substance paint after that, because then I will do the low poly and bakes in between. That sounds okay. Um, so I'm probably gonna stream maybe during the days next week. Because uh, I have my last working day on Friday, and then I have a bit of a downtime, and then I start working again the 14th of uh, May at my new work. So um, can actually work a little bit more on my personal projects in the meantime. So I might do a random stream during the day, and then work on this. Uh, but we will see. Otherwise, we'll continue on uh, Wednesday evening, and. Well, thank you for joining. It's been fun and I think I got a decent base and also learned a lot of new tricks again uh, in ZBrush. Uh, I hope you guys will have a nice evening. Uh, I will shut down the stream now and uh, just uh, get in touch if you like in uh, the Discord channel and otherwise talk to you later. Bye-bye.